hello and welcome back everyone so let's start with today's topic which is properties of cross cylinder so what are properties of cross cylinder these are nothing but whenever you write a prescription or a cylinder into a cross form so there are some of the properties of addition subtraction and neutralization which can be used on daily basis into your practice so we are going to discuss that what are all these properties and how to make them use into our daily practice so let's start with the topic so let's start with the first one so here if you see there are two cross cylinders here so whenever two cross cylinders are placed in such a way what will be the resultant so the property says that whenever two cylinders are placed together with their axis parallel to one another can be replaced by a single cylinder whose power is equal to the sum of two cylinder so what it means is that whenever two cylinders so if you can see here there is one cylinder which is plus 1 at 180 and there is another cylinder which is again a plus 1 at 180 so these two have an axis which are parallel to one another so 180 and 180 these two are parallel so whenever these two cylinders are kept together in front of each other like for example you have a trial frame in which you keep two plus one cylinder at 180 degree axis the resultant lens which is acting onto the eye will be a plus two cylinder at 180 so now how it will come into our use many times what happens we don't have a particular power into our trial set let's say there is a lens which is missing so for example I want a plus 3 cylinder at 180 so what I can do is I can use a plus 1 cylinder at 180 and a plus 2 cylinder at 180 rather it is taken as the last option if you don't have any other options so this can be useful for replacing a particular power many times what happens that you want to test a cylinder which is not in range let's say you want to test plus 8 cylinder okay just an example but we have a limitation of up till plus 6 cylinder in our trial set so what we can do is we can take a plus 6 cylinder and a plus 2 cylinder or a plus 4 and plus 4 keep them parallel together so whatever the total power will be it will be a addition of both the cylinders so that is what is called as the property number one so now going on to the second property so what the second property says it is that when two cylinders of equal power but opposite signs are placed together with their axis parallel to one another will neutralize each other now if you see here there is one lens which is plus one cylinder at 180 okay so here the power is plus one axis is 180 and the second lens is minus one at 180 so here the amount of the power is same okay so it is an equal cylinder only thing is there is an opposite sign here it is a plus sign here it is a minus sign with their axis parallel to one another so what will happen simple rule of addition what we know this two will cancel each other and it will result into a plano lens which basically neutralizes each other so what happens that whenever you want to find a power of a lens especially a cylindrical lens what we do is if we have a particular power we take the opposite sign of it like for example I have a convex cylinder in my hand so I'll take a concave cylinder keep its axis parallel to the other one and keep on increasing until unless it gets neutralized this property is very helpful while performing neutralization so what happens that whatever the power of that particular cylinder will be you need to take a same power but with an opposite sign and keep it parallel to the axis what that particular lens has so that is how this property can be used coming on to the third property which is basically having a spherical lens from two cylindrical lenses so here the property says that whenever two cylinders of ident uh, your two identical cylinders placed together with their axis perpendicular to one another so now here I said the word identical so identical means here both of them will have a power of same equal like plus one and plus one exactly same with the sign as same as well but the only difference here is that both of them are kept perpendicular to one another so if one axis is 180 the other would be 90 degree so what happens that whenever you keep two such identical cylinders together with their axis perpendicular to one another they just get added up and make a spherical power so if you see plus one and zero it makes plus one 0 and plus 1 again it makes plus 1 so here what happens that both the axes are getting the same power that is plus 1 and plus 1 which gives you a spherical lens now again this can be very much helpful when a particular lens is not present rather there are two ways you can use two combination of your uh, rather 
two spherical lenses like plus and minus but if you don't want that what you can do is if you want to replace a particular spherical lens you can take two cylindrical lenses of same power and just keep them perpendicular to one another and that will make a spherical power okay so here the simply your property is whenever you keep two identical cylinder that is plus one diopter cylinder plus one diopter cylinder but they are perpendicular to one another and kept together that will give you a spherical lens which is plus one diopter so that can be with anything let's say if it is your minus 3 at 180 and minus 3 at 90 that will give you a minus 3 diopter spherical lens so whenever the identical cylinders are kept perpendicular to one another their resultant will give you a spherical lens of same power so let's go to the fourth property now when we say the fourth property the fourth property is not about combination but is it is about resolution resolution in the sense that let's say I have a cylinder okay so how this cylinder can be replaced by two lenses till now what we have done is we took two lenses and made it to one particular lens but here we will get one lens and break it into two different lenses so any single cylinder can be replaced by a sphere of same power combined with a cylinder of opposite power and with it axis parallel to the sorry axis perpendicular to the original axis so what it means is like if I have a cylinder which is plus one cylinder at 180 the statement says this cylinder can be replaced by a sphere of same power so what is the power here plus one so I'll take a plus one diopter spherical and combine it with a cylinder of same power but opposite sign so what is the power here one but opposite sign would be minus one okay and axis perpendicular to the original axis so this is my original axis which is 180 so I will make it perpendicular that is 90 degree so if I want to replace a plus one diopter cylinder I can replace it with a plus one spherical with a minus one cylinder at 90 degree it is nothing but it is similar to what we have in transposition so if you transpose this equation that is plus one diopter spherical with minus one diopter cylinder at 90 and just transpose it it will give you a value of plus one diopter cylinder at 180 so it is similar to what we have in your transposition that any cylinder can be converted into a sphero cylinder form okay so this is quite a simple one which we already use uh, normally into a practice while transposing coming to the last property or the fifth property which we have it is called as the property of sphero cylinder so here what happens that the statement is two unequal cylinders placed together with their axis perpendicular to one another can be replaced by a sphere and a cylinder so what it means is that for example I keep two cylinders of different strength like for example here it is a plus two cylinder at 180 and here it is a plus five cylinder at 90 okay so there's a mistake here it is plus four written but it is plus five cylinder at your 90 so what happens when these two cylinders are kept perpendicular to one another the combination will give you a sphero cylindrical or a sphere and a cylinder so how it happens it is simple you these are the true crosses so 2 plus 0 that will give you 2 and 0 plus 5 that will give you 5 so here this cross becomes a sphero cylinder so we can just convert it into a prescription form taking this as your spherical that is plus 2 diopter spherical difference as the cylinder which is plus 3 diopter cylinder and axis will be 90 the axis of your spherical power or else vice versa that is plus 5 diopter spherical minus 3 cylinder at 180 so this simply says that whenever you keep two cylinders perpendicular to one another that will give you a sphero cylindrical uh, value this particular technique is most of the time used in one of the forms of retinoscopy as we all know retinoscopy we can do by three methods that is one is double sphere method second is your sphero cell method and the third one is double cell method so when you do a double cell method you basically do this you keep two cylinders perpendicular to one another depending on a streak and when you get the value for the total refraction you will just add them up and make it a cross which will give you a sphero cylindrical value so these were the total five properties of your cross cylinder so there are different applications of this cross cylinder the basic meaning or the basic understanding of this is that whenever you write a prescription that prescription is also into a cross form and you can rather add it with it or you can subtract or you can resolve or compound it basically a single cylinder can be transposed into your sphero cell a sphero cell can be changed into a single cell depending on the powers 
two cylinders can be added, two cylinders can be subtracted depending on the uh, parallel or perpendicular axis to one another. So I hope this video was helpful for you. For any doubts, please post your comment onto the comment section and your answer would be given there and there itself. For further videos on optics, please subscribe our channel and keep liking it. Thank you and have a good day.